So it's uh, 602 just about. Let's call the meeting to order. August 26th. What do we got here? Any adjustments to the agenda? Um, I was going to add something under the Road Commissioner's report, but that's not really an adjustment. Should we no. hold off on the town hall roof stuff? Because Chris isn't here. Should we postpone that, do you think? Yes. Okay. No, I was just going to say, I haven't done my part. Okay. Well, I haven't really either. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Chris is not here today, tonight. Um, so we're going to postpone the town hall roof replacement discussions under other business. Uh, minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? I'll make a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You can sign this and pass it all on. There's a copy for you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> public comment. No public. Okay. Town clerk report. Rob and Durkee. I got hold of the Times Argus, the World, the Gazette. Yeah. Times Argus said the first time they were going to run it was this past Saturday. Yeah. And then they will run it. And the world's going to run it for two weeks. And I got hold of the Gazette today, and they said they get, did get the request, and it will begin the paper this week. Okay. Can, can you tell us what it is that's going to be run? The, the advertisement for the treasurer. Okay. Randy uh, asked us to do that. I just couldn't realize what it was. <laughs> and Gillespie's is scheduled to come tomorrow to switch the hot and cold mm -hmm. air around down in the basement. What's the guy's name up? Or the quarry? With the trash? Uh, Graham. Casanel Graham. We had another complaint about his property today, that there's now rats running around on that property. Where in the middle it? of the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Who would notice that? Anybody who rides those trails, it's on the vast Do trails. people do Still that? There. People yeah, ride right by there? It's a classic. I mean, I haven't been out there for years, so I don't know. Yeah. 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 They should just, maybe there should be a sign that says speed up. to us twice and we haven't done anything they're going to the state now this oh, is good. a neighbor right and he's concerned because it's the trash is attracting bad things like onto his property yep. okay. no his property is far away I mean really it's, it's animals travel in a distance of it's a bear issue mm -hmm. so yes okay well that would be interesting to see I mean the, the uh, other person it's on the list for the state to um, com address complaints. Is uh, I told them as a town health officer, I had been there and I hadn't found any garbage or any human waste or anything, and I couldn't see any um, public health threat. But he said he was still going to go there because it is still a solid waste dump. You know, it's a... a too much stuff. <laughs> Jump. I guess they call that solid waste dump. But we'll see. And nobody stepped forward yet to be health <coughs> health officer. Still you? Yeah. Right? Okay. Is, is that the ANR person that's gonna go and yeah. inspect the site? Is yeah. it the same person? He's the same person that's yeah. That they've done it for a number of years. Right. Okay. Yeah. Robin, where was that again? It's up off the Cabot Road. Is it's a class old? four across from Tom Brooks's behind Phil. It's not on Old Quarry Road? No. No. Okay. no. It's a class four that's out behind Phil um, Edson's. Edson's house. 
Okay. That's the one that I, the one I was talking about was the one on Old Quarry Road. Right, right. That, that I was a not confused. Yeah. We got one. Yeah. So, um, as far as the office goes, Skip has, the, I asked why they wanted to put all this special equipment out in the dark and dirty basement. And they said, what, I, were they just hoping not to be in the way of any office space that we might create down there? And he said, oh, we hadn't thought of that. So <laughs> he's thinking about putting it in, you know, on that same back wall, but on the uh, outside, like inside the room. Where all my big cabinets used to be. Right. Right. Where the, yeah, where the, but that can't be done until that sheetrock is fixed. Well, if that was going to go in there, they wanted plywood behind it, not sheetrock. Well, it's so. still going to have sheetrock. The, the bottom half still has to have sheetrock. And the top half is all holes and stuff that need to be yep. plastered. Yep. So I don't know if they still want plywood on top of the sheetrock. I wouldn't we'll think it ask. matters. Think I'm sure so, as long yeah. as they've got plywood to mount to. What? I'm sure as long as they've got plywood to mount to. No, they they would just have two by fours to mount to. Oh yeah, I'm sure they need plywood. Oh, um, you think they mean plywood yeah. on top of the sheetrock? Definitely. I okay. thought I you were. Sheetrock down, then put the plywood up. It's probably easier to go right over the top of it, and they won't need to do any work behind it because that plywood's gonna just you know be there forever. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's really a hold up. Like, mm -hmm. they could go ahead and do that before the rest of the work is done, mm -hmm. I would think. It's all going to be above the four foot um, part that's got no I guess it depends, how, on it. it depends how much space they need, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mm -hmm. don't know how much mm -hmm. room they need. Any chance that there's going to be any sheetrock work? Yeah, Mike was going to get to it in a few weeks. And I pretty much told him it'd be better to contact you just because... Yeah, I haven't heard from him yet. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's trying to get there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, as soon as that duct work is done tomorrow, they should be able to... should be clear sailing for sheetrock when mm -hmm. he can get there. And we still have four dogs left that have not been licensed in really? the town yet. That would be bad. getting turned over to <laughs> Ed. Ed. Well, yep. Now, I think Ed called me and wanted me to tell you, Brandy, that he had followed up on the dogs on Old Quarry Road, but yeah. you probably knew that by now because I know the person came in and uh, registered them. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. And then the other thing I have is somebody would like to see that refrigerator that's down in the middle of the village on the side of the road removed. I wonder where that came from. It sort of showed up after the July 10th flood. Yeah, but did it float it's, out from behind? I have no idea where it came from, but that's where it ended up, I think. Yeah. Because it was where there before. It's I wonder if it on was... the 14th at uh, Jacob's house. Oh, was it out okay. back? I wonder if it was out back. I drive blinders on here. typically. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, it's a lot better than it was this time last year. So <laughs> there's only, I wonder if, any, if anybody ever got that, uh, that kettle thing. If anybody ever bought that or if it finally got stolen. No, Chris took it. It's over on Chris's property. Oh, good. Okay, good. <laughs> Would that be the responsibility of the present property owner of that house? You would the, assume the so. refrigerator? Yeah. Is yeah. it right there? It's right tight to the house. Pretty yeah. Much. And we don't know where it came or is from. It's downtown property over the cross uh, I don't know. It's probably on state property. Kind of it's within the right of way. <laughs> it looked like it came out of the house. Right? Yeah. I can't imagine where else it could have come from unless somebody dumped it there, and that would, doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, put that on the list, I guess. Somebody. I don't know. Want me to give Jake a call and see if it's his and see if he's willing to do something with it? 
You could, I guess. Um, Maybe if we just put a free sign on it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but it's not. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You wouldn't even have to have a sign. Five dollars! You, <laughs> you wouldn't even have to have a sign, just spray paint on it. <laughs> I mean, how long did the hot tub sit there? Mm. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, any more on the pest control? I talked with. Um, is it Mary Ellen? Mary Jo. Mary Jo Llewellyn. Her. Yeah. And she says the best thing, to, she's going to send me some articles to mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. And she thinks the best thing to do is go like out to Aubuchon's and there's pest bags that we can get. Well, she said, uh, she said Agway, but probably just other places. It was called Mouse, oh gosh, now I can't remember. Mouse Safe or something like that. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna get some of those. But she myself. said the price for the exterminator was way out of. Well, I don't like the idea of going around and trying to trying to close any holes in that basement. I mean, it's been, <laughs> it's a really old building. I'm sure they could probably come in right through the bulkhead if they want to. But yeah, to get something that would just make them want to go away. Um, and also, I don't like the idea of any pest control outside of the building when you've got a family with little kids living right next door. But I would like to see them do something about those ants. So it's hard to tell from this estimate which part is about the ants. Yeah, they didn't separate it. What? They didn't separate no. it. No. Mm, well. But it just it seems outrageous. What? It seems outrageous. The price? Yeah. Yeah. I had to deal with carpenter ants on my camp at uh, Nichols Pond. Mm -hmm. I just got a can of spray and mm -hmm. sprayed it into the, you know, they were actually they were eating the two by fours that mm -hmm. uh, hold the roof up. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I just sprayed it into any different spots mm -hmm. where I saw them and, and that did the trick. Weren't you so, going to do that at one point? Huh? You volunteer. You volunteer and haven't done flood, haven't done came. what? The floods came. Oh yeah, you've been busy. <laughs> the excuse works every time. <laughs> he, he just doesn't love us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, I can still do that, but then the last meeting I think we talked about hiring somebody, so I. Yeah, well, I think hiring somebody, you know, just to spray for ants seems like a, what they're asking for here is five hundred and five dollars, and then bi-monthly for eleven months, one hundred and five. They want to come back every two months for one hundred and five dollars. So, I, yeah. I the think. thing is that blew my mind going with them is that I know somebody personally that has them come once a year, mm -hmm. does around the complete house, mm -hmm. gets rid of spiders mm -hmm. for 150 bucks. Really? So I don't know where mm -hmm. they figured, ooh, it's a business that uh, we're going to... Mm -hmm. Deep pockets? I don't know. Anyways, I think we'll just keep waiting for somebody to... Do the spraying. Is that something that. Oh, you want to volunteer? No. Oh, she <laughs> glad you raised your hand. Who is that person? <laughs> that what? Who is that person? Perhaps a The star. company? Yeah, who was $150 monthly. It was the same. Same company? Same. That's the same company. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Mm. yeah. Seems odd. And, and our building is so simple, you know? It's not like there's a lot of rooms and things like that. It's just, but anyway. Okay, treasurer's report. Yep. Over the last two weeks, cash receipts taking in three thousand five hundred fifty dollars and eighty-eight cents, in which delinquencies that um, were part of that three thousand three hundred fifty dollars and eighty-eight cents. Prepaid taxes was two hundred. Um, payroll 
$9,585.02. Accounts payable, $18,660.27. I transferred last week $6,000 to cover expenses. I did not cover, as you can see on your balance sheet, we're negative. Um, it's not staying that way. I did not transfer money. Um, we have had just today while we were open, 12 people came in and paid their property taxes. Mm -hmm. um, so I will not be transferring money to cover that. So it's not staying that way. Um, I'm just not taking any more out of the money market. And you're not uh, using the uh, line of credit yet? Nope. Good. Good. It's there and I know it's there and that's my comfort. Mm -hmm. But until 245000 from the money market is gone, mm. I will Ooh. take that leap. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> so when people start calling about the ad for the town treasurer position. Hopefully by that oh, time we'll have a the a select review. board's email. Do either one of you get that email? No, Robin gets it. Okay. So I just figured it would, it would be should be one place and then she distributes it to Gotcha. Yeah, instead of giving a phone number and all that stuff, I'd rather have just one one point of contact and uh, don't miss any. Yep. <laughs> On the other hand, you know, you don't want to push it either. Push Brandy. <clears throat> That's all for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't work my coffee cup here. So, road report. Uh, so, we have lots of report. Uh, we've got most of the big culverts replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that were chronic problems. Uh, we started the bridge today. Last week we did a bunch of hand, sand hauling, so we did three days there, and then Thursday we ran the grader, uh, just to try to spread ourselves out a little bit. They called for rain all day, all last week, so that's why mm -hmm. I decided to do the sand hauling. Incidentally, it didn't rain a lot, but yeah. that's, our, that's our <laughs> forecast these days. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's still a bunch more ditching that we need to do. Uh, Michael and I have prioritized grant work. So as soon as I get the bridge, and then there's the one more project, which is uh, Nichols Ledge, and then I can go on to our normal summer projects, hopefully. Yeah, that'll be September probably. Definitely yeah. September, yeah. So is Nichols Ledge Road passable at all? Or? Uh, I went through it with the 550 yeah. the other day. Uh -huh. It's rough. It's not. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't take a supervisor or my Subaru mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. very low. But uh, mm -hmm. I think one day up there we can have it fixed and have it back the way it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's on my to do list. Yeah. Uh, any questions? I wanted to share that after our last meeting, there was some questions uh, about Corkscrew Road. Brandy thought, I mean, not Brandy, I'm sorry, Lizzie had questions about whether it was really a road. I thought I had seen this somewhere before um, in my years in the office. Sure enough, I found it. Uh, Right here. This is a survey done for the uh, the timber company. Oh gosh. Behind. I'm trying to orient myself. Where's right Route 14? Is this Route 14 right here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. By by Russell Deming, who's yeah. generally 
agreed to be a pretty good surveyor. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it was in 1990 it was done. I think it was barred to land and lumber at the time. I, I didn't get all of this, but. Oh, you might need one too, Skip, in case, in case uh, you have to prove to FEMA that it is a town road. Okay, well that makes me feel I mean, I did look, better it, this is it. what it says, the Corkscrew Town Highway, Town Record Book 2 in parentheses, the brown one, page 334-335, May 24, 1886. And then it says a partial reroute Pent Road for public use. And somewhere else here it says end two rods wide. Um, and it shows it goes all the way up to Town Highway, I think this is Buck Lake Road. It goes across the railroad line and down, and the, really the course part is right before it gets to Route 14, and then it even shows a little bridge there. Um, Thanks for digging did, that up. I tried to look up that, well, it says the brown book, but all of our books in the last 20 years have been re redone. Uh, and they all have red covers now, so it could be that, or it could be another book that's up on the top of the shelf that I didn't dig out. Uh, if so, anyway, that's so we the start. Yeah, here. No, I've got more. Okay. I've got more. So, is Corkscrew Road considered a town road all the way up to? Um, it, you know, it has, as far as I know, since okay. it hasn't been thrown up. Okay. You know, it, it, you're the one that had, so who has, was, was it you that asked? I, was, I mean, Michael, I, I think, has said that he's walked it, hasn't he? Did you say anything Yeah, I have walked it. It's amazing. Oh, okay. up there. There's just all kinds of old granite cores. Robin, please. I call them mom and pop quarries where it's just a little bit of land and it's been boring. Oh, yeah. It's just blocks of granite all over the place. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm. It's like a granite dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so it's a long as map. I can see who's working. I can see the bridge. Where's Buck Lake? Is that Buck Lake is on the map? But Buck Lake Road is the town highway. Is the town highway 8? Yes. Okay, so that's Buckley Road. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I think the, the oh the railroad is called out here. That's a, just a dotted line roughly parallel to right. Route 14. So it's possible that if someone wanted to oh, log any like that fist lot or any of those uh, Bartel Lane and Lumber Lots, they could use that road and then they could possibly use part of the rail trail. I mean, I think that's been done before in the winter. It's been used for logging, but hopefully it's not. A so, so is this a class four road? That's what it, well, what does it say? It says it, it, it does say, it says at so, one point there was a partial reroute. Pent Road for public use. I don't know what that means. So yeah. Is a Pent Road equivalent to a cross board? Well, Pent Road just has a gate, right? Isn't yeah. that the definition? Pent Road can have a gate. So if it's not class one, two, or three, it's got to be class four, right? right? It has to be a town road in order to be considered a Pent Road. Okay. Otherwise, it's just a private road and they yeah, can send it if they want. They <laughs> so was there work done on this? Mm -hmm. Recently, because of the was it July 10th, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just, just the bridge down at the bottom. Diana, <coughs> did these two pieces hook together? <coughs> yeah, I didn't get the whole or thing. Or is there another section in here? Yeah, there would be more. I didn't get the whole thing. Yeah. 
So, yeah, who knows what it looks like? Uh, I have it. So, 24 flood, we did not. 23 flood. Right. That's right. That's last year's flood, year. we did not work on it. This year, it did some stains and damages. So, where was so that? Road up above. Oh, right there. Yeah. Road over the, uh, well, Crook Screw Road is woods. I mean, it's, yeah. Right, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a basically an unused road. Yeah. Haven't been up there looking for damage. I haven't. Right, right. Uh, yeah. It's possible that it is, Michael. I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty steep. It's very steep and up and down. Yeah. So it's most likely it probably is. Yeah. Especially below the the uh, rail trail. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the trail. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's real steep. Mm -hmm. We want the Buckley. Buck Lake yeah. for, for um, the we, um, from Stratton Road and Harbor um, when we uh, reclassify that section yeah. to a trail. Yeah. So, okay. That's so what we got on that? Notify V Trans that that is a class four road to get put on the next rendition of a map. Or? I don't know why. Well, you know they're well, not going to give us that. what? FEMA would certainly want that classified they, as a class four road. Would they? Yes. Yeah. Short yeah. answer is yes. Yep. So, so this, this this wouldn't be enough to show them that it is a class that it is a town road. Right. Yeah, right. This is the water, but this is frosty. So this is on the other side mm -hmm. of our hill. So in my theory, it would be more like We can ask them to so come out. Here or something. They won't come out. No, I mean for V-Trans to come out. Okay. Yeah, they, they do. They send a notice every year. Right. V-Trans mm -hmm. does, asking them to look for any changes. Oh, right. Oh, right. The rows being right. drilled up or, or added. Mm -hmm. And that time has already mm -hmm. come for this year. Uh -huh. So somebody should reach out to them, then not wait till next year, because we will vote on it sooner, right? Who should within they have? To, what's that? Within a year of July. Okay. So who should reach out to them? Who should reach out to them? I can do that. Okay. Thank you, Diana. They have a lot of um, V Trans has a lot of old records that we don't even have, so they might even have something on this. Mm -hmm. I've always had an intention of going down there. I forget what it was. I guess it was when I was researching the Nichols Dam Road. <laughs> I never got there. Yeah. They have a lot of stuff. Okay. So that road is not in Puma's vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> they have not. Yeah, yes. It's not really a, an official classification. But, um, but it does imply that there's a gate somewhere. Mm They don't uh, have, and you know, they don't give us any money for class four roads. Yes, they do. V trans does. Yeah. Oh no, but I mean V oh. trans. Oh. So as far as whether or not it's on the map, they probably don't care. It's not. It's not like any hair off there. If they didn't, right. uh, it's more if they had it. Right. Yeah. Right. For a future reference. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. To get it onto the state map. So you won't have to go digging around again next time. Right. It'll be more obvious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you created, um, oh, yeah, turn on the phone. That road that goes down past um, Paul Betts' house. Charlie Hill? Charlie Hill was done Thursday. Okay. It was okay. Scribner Road. Um, and then it was the mayor went out west kind of out to County Road and fixed a few spots. Okay, because we had somebody coming in asking about well, I know, I got Charlie Hill. Several complaints mm -hmm. also. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. No, that's been graded in Florida. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, there's this here. Okay, so that's it for roads. As far as I'm concerned, unless there's further questions. Ah, here comes Chris. Wow. He missed the fun part. <laughs> Where were they? In the grass. Oh, of course. You, you found them though. You don't have to get your spare. You I found did them. Not have to get oh. spare. Oh, that's good. It happened that somebody was walking by and they said, What are you doing? I like, I'm looking for my keys. And they go, There they are. <laughs> oh my god. Nice. Anyways. I'm glad you found them. Sorry to interrupt. So. We just finished the road report. Do you have any questions? For I, sh I was uh, mm -hmm. showing the results of my research. About Corkscrew? Yeah, about yeah. Corkscrew Road. And this is what I found in Russell Deming's survey from 1990. Uh, and Skip thinks that won't be enough to convince FEMA that it's a town road. Which knows? <laughs> if anybody knows, you do. Yeah. So this, <laughs> that's a, and then that turns into a class four road that. Uh, well, he, if you read this, it doesn't say class four road. It says. Turns into a trail. It says town highway. Road. All it says is town highway. And then down here it says there's a partial reroute with a pent, uh, pent yeah. road for public use. Yep. But uh, Skip thinks it should say class four road. It should be classified whatever the trans classifies. Right? Yeah. If the trans changes the categorization from a pent road to a class four road. From, what did you oh, say? What you call it? A class four road can be a pent road. What's a pent road? Pent road is something that can be gated. For example, yeah. somebody wants to have their cows not be able to run down the yeah, road. Okay. Can, you know. So if you can find the records book that's referred to here, there right. may be uh, documentation that a former select board in 1886 or whatever. Yeah, I don't um, think I have to go that far. Classified it as a class four. Yeah. <laughs> and then you don't have to. Mm. We have the book and page number, but I just can't find the, the book. Okay. So it must be there. And somewhere. it's actually in script, which I can read. Yeah. But it's very hard. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. so, but like I said, the, they want me to go to VTrans and see whether we can get it put on the map, town map officially so that this uh, bridge repair can be covered. Skip, will that satisfy FEMA if Diana calls VTrans and tells them that we have documentation that it is a class for road? Email? Yeah. Email. And that'll take care of the whole issue with FEMA wise. say that this corkscrew road is changed from a pent road uh -huh. to a class four. Okay. Do they, ha do they have it classified as a no. pent road right now? That's what, it's what this that. says. You don't know. It they says don't. partial reroute, reroute pent road for public use. And but up here it says town record book to the corkscrew town highway. And it gives a book and page numbers and the date. And then it says partial reroute. Pent Road, it's hard to say which part was Pent and which part was mm -hmm. rerouted, but okay. Pent Road is not the, I mean, the Town Highway, I would think it's the most important thing that it says there. Well, Town Highway, yeah. it says Town Highway 3, Town Highway 2, Town Highway 4. Yeah. We, and some towns. not in. But, but the Town Highway. Oh. Class four road can be a pent road. Can have a section that's a pent road. We went through a this class, last year. A class three road, you cannot put a gate on. Not unless class you get four. permission to have it be a pent, pent road. But a class four, you can pent it. Yeah. But you still have to have town approval. Right. Yeah. Which apparently that has happened. So mm -hmm. that right? Because it's saying on the yeah, survey that it's a pent road. <laughs> I think it was originally a class four, and mm -hmm. then they pented it. Somebody got the town to, to pent it. But that doesn't make it not a class four, right? right. It just means it has a gate. Right. Yeah. Is that road? Yeah. Probably because the lumber company used it to access their road, and if other buddy, everybody else was using it, it would get ruined. And that's not listed as a town road. So is that road listed as a town road currently? 
And if it is, is it listed as a class four? No, Brandy has the list. It's not on there. It's not no, it's not on there. That's why I went looking for it. Okay. And it's not on the VTrans 2014 map, right? Which is the most current. Right. So if you, I would suggest that you try to find the record that's referred to here and see if there's any, because mm -hmm. um, that's what FEMA's going to want. I mean, this is a surveyor's map, mm -hmm. so chances are, and the surveyor is a good one mm -hmm. and with a good reputation, mm -hmm. but so chances are it is a class four rule, but I think for FEMA they would want mm -hmm. more than a surveyor's map. All it's right, well one, then, it's a must. that's what we've got. Okay, it's a must. I'll look for it tomorrow. Because what Thank we you, have Robin. to do is we have to submit a, you guys go in the Wayback Machine, a damage inventory sheet. And that damage inventory sheet uh, categorizes the road class three or class four. Also categorizes or describes the damage. It gives lap long and lap long of the damage. Mm -hmm. And descriptions and length of the damage. So they will not accept anything other than a class three or a class four road. A pent road won't fly. Mm. They want them just totally disregarded. So with that, <laughs> that classification, you cannot fill out a damage inventory and be reimbursed okay. for Alfie's work on that road. But, okay, but you keep calling it a pent road, but there was a part of it was a pent road, yeah, but it still way. says yeah. town yeah. highway, yeah. so mm -hmm. I gotta write Will you let us know what you find out? Thank you, thanks for doing that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They have a lot of old stuff, yeah. They will see that it either it is a class yeah. four, yeah. or it is not. Yeah. And then they'll, they'll put their stamp mm -hmm. on it and mm -hmm. say, yes, it's a class four, mm -hmm. or no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what needs to happen. The pen, the pen is is throwing us off. Exactly. The pen can exactly. be any class four road. It can right. be a trail. It's a pen. Right. It's, it means it can be put a gate. A gate can be yep. on. So we just gotta we just gotta verify that it is a class four. Is there a gate on it? No. no. There's not a gate. Even further up. No. But maybe there used to. Michael has actually it walked it at one time, but it's a fascinating walk. I highly recommend it. Mm. <laughs> No, really. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> history and what you see mm -hmm. along the road. Maybe we can do our next meeting out there instead of here. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll meet there. there. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah, walk from Buck Lake to <laughs> the Hard Rock Trail was fun, but yeah. that was a few years ago. I don't know if I could make that now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, recovery officer report. And there was also an email from you that you wanted. Does the town want to apply for FEMA disaster relief for the latest disaster declaration? Yeah. I presume that you guys want to do that. Yes, so, please. So I'll just back up. I tried to do that today, presuming that you folks would want to know and I to continue. And the website wouldn't let me do that. Because because it said you're already part of disaster 4720, which is last year's disaster, and you can't not apply for a new disaster. So which? Oh, for God's sake! Which has a head spinning, and I tried everything I could. So I have to talk to the program delivery manager on our call on Wednesday and find out what's going on. And why Danielle and I can't be associated with this new disaster? We will we'll sort that out. Thank you. So they will have, they have to have separate people or different people for each disaster? No, it's just, <laughs> just it's like a, just a nuance in their uh, website. Uh, if you're part of this old disaster, which is 4720-DR, you cannot apply to this 4810-DR because you're already doing this other disaster. They're probably not used to having so many disasters all at once. I'm sorry? They're probably not used to having so many disasters all at once. Well, they should be though. Right. Right, but it might might have something to do with the same with like that some of our agents are FEMA agents. That's true. We never had the same one at, at each time. <laughs> that's right. There was a new one that came to visit every time. So maybe mm -hmm. that's just we're a number five policy. We're a number mm -hmm. five. No. So that's okay. We train them 
and uh, <laughs> then they go away. Then they go away. <laughs> <laughs> they go help somebody else. <laughs> yelling and screaming from Woodbury. Okay, so project updates. Excuse me, this is as of this morning. So we are in receipt of $6,533 from the state of Vermont. And that's right there. This is called a uh, financial report form. So that was sent out, I want to say, on 714. So I think Brandy received that. I did. So that's the first check? One. One yeah. only. Yeah. yeah. So today I signed two financial report forms, one totaling $62,533, and that's for work on East Hill Road. Mm -hmm. And the second one was for $6,775, and that was for Town Highway 24 Bridge. So this, these two forms are the precursor of another form that I'll have to sign, which allows the money to flow into Brandy. So I'm presuming within this week, we'll be getting like <coughs> 70 grand into the treasury. Really? Wow. Truly. Wow. I thought they were out of money. That was my question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard today that Congress is going to pass a uh, funding bill so that it will sustain FEMA through this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and also I heard a report that some of the congressmen, or senators, at least one from Vermont are grumbly with the way FEMA uh, does their work. You know, because they've heard from their constituents saying that this is un unwieldy, you know, having to train people all the time and having to respond to questions like this. And I just thought I would do this as, a, uh, as an example of what we have to do. It's here somewhere. So I got a question last week. I can just remember it. Oh, yeah, here it is. So this is from the new pro program delivery manager. So she said that uh, the environmental and historic preservation group within FEMA that we're working with desires to know the source and GPS coordinate location of the materials used to repair the roads. Oh my god. What? <laughs> That's what I said in so many words. So I wrote back, you know, and said this is an unusual request and the first of its kind we've been asked to respond to. So I responded and I ticked off five separate locations from which Alfie sourced the material. But I refused to give the GPS locations. I said, here's where we got it from, and if you guys want to do the GPS locations, go for it. Google Maps. Yeah, really. Because that to me is just a waste of my time. Mm -hmm. mm. They have all this information, and it's just incredible that they would reach out mm. and say, okay, what's the GPS location? Mm. To me, that's just lazy on their part. And if I <laughs> can say this much too granular. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. So, we all know what you mean now. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> so, anyhow, you know, it's like they need to understand where every pebble comes from. Mm. And that's just excruciating for Daniela. Well, can you can't just give them a GPS for the quarry and tell them to go take a look? Yeah. Well, I sent them maps. <laughs> you know, they have maps of all these locations, too. And that, that's been sitting in their queue oh. since October of 2023. Mm. It's just stunning. Mm. So, okay, where we are. So we have four obligated projects, of which... Um, we got paid for Town Highway 23 bridge replacement. We will be paid for East Hill Road and Town Highway 24. We're waiting for documentation like this, these financial records from the state for Old Quarry and Blake Hill Roads and Cabot Road. So those are the only obligated projects in which we can expect money in the next couple of weeks or so. Mm. Projects in process, and these are pending environmental and historic review. Mm -hmm. Still, North and South Parks, Woodbury Hardware Rail Trail, and an all-encompassing project which includes Uber Road, Frosty Hill Road, etc., etc. 
all our projects pending hazard mitigation completion, it's Town Highway 24 breach mitigation, work not complete, and we'll write for an extension. I have more on, on that project later in my mm. presentation. Follow-up projects pending CRC project development, and that's Consolidated Resource Center in Puerto Rico. That's Town Highway 23 bridge mitigation project. And again, that work's not complete, we'll write for an extension. So there are three projects that have been sitting in their queue since October and haven't been touched. Mm -hmm. North Hattie Bell Road, Nichols Pond Road, etc. There's like three or four more roads associated with that project. County Road and Cabot Road, mm -hmm. uh, sections 10 and 20. Uh, follow up on projects pending initial project development. Projects not completed. Uh, there's just one, and that would be town offices. The uh, radar sign got lumped into that project. Don't ask me how and why, but mm -hmm. FEMA said that it should be. Mm -hmm. So as soon as the town office work is complete, and I can do the calculations between how much the insurance paid and how much is left over, I can submit that, and we can get that moving towards being obligated. So in the discussion, so there are, as we all know, the Town Highway 23 and 24 projects, we're going to write for mitigation projects. And they'll be exceeding, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars for each. So FEMA is going to write the mitigation plan. Because for us, for me to write a mitigation plan, I'm not a professional engineer, that would be out of my scope. I just couldn't do that. So Diana, thank you for reaching out to our town engineer, mm -hmm. Mr. Sikara. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he sent back some preliminary uh, design work, mm -hmm. and I sent that along to FEMA today. Mm -hmm. So FEMA now has the H and H study, hydrology and hydraulics mm -hmm. study. They have the DeWolf <laughs> estimate, and now they have our PE engineers design for that. And I wrote to our PDMG saying, what else do you need? I mean, they have, you know, uh, budgetary cost, if you want to call it that. They have the H&H &H study from A&R, and now they have our engineer. They should be able to go forward and write a mitigation plan. I'm, I'm concerned that uh, on the H&H, &H, they list four things that are four standard things, right. but the one that Nate's suggesting, I'm not sure was one of those. But it was, I, I looked at it and it's like an amalgamation of a couple. Yeah. So it, yeah. it'll pass, I think, muster from A&R. Okay. Because I, I hope that they realize that B-Trans doesn't tell us what to do, they tell us what we can do. But right. they don't. There are options. <laughs> there, there, yeah. there are options. Yeah. And he said that within the okay. body of, yeah. of okay. his email. Yeah. You know, so I think these are both designs of amalgamation of the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, so I have a question about how will that affect the contract that we have with Nick Seacard for the engineering? He's going design? forward. He, well, this yeah, is I mean, that's he, what, what was asked was. FEMA, somebody asked what of those H and H suggestions we were which, choosing, so I which four? I went out, which of, um, of the four? got out went out to uh, Nate and asked him how far along he is in for the design and he wrote back with some uh, um, explanation of what he's suggesting as some kind of a metal okay. thing with a in a concrete base or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pipe arch. Pipe arch, thank you. Aluminum pipe arch, uh, galvanized pipe arch. Mm -hmm. mm. That's out of my scope. Like, Mine too, I had never heard of it. Well, all that information, them having that information will allow us to still apply for an, for an extension. No, that's correct. Because they have, especially the estimate from DeWolf. And they have everything they need, Chris, to move forward. And that extension will allow, give us another year? Up to 18 months. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And I have to write that extension before December 14th of this year. But we're good, to, mm -hmm. we're good to do that. We're not waiting on anything. We're waiting on them to 
get it all through this process because not only is it going to have to go to mitigation, it's going to go, have to go to uh, environmental and historical. It's going to have to touch all these folks again mm -hmm. before it hits the obligation. Which brings me to my other comment. I don't know whether anybody heard this um, reporting by Pete Hirschfeld about the floods and FEMA's response to the floods, but I, I, I look, drew it up because it was, I didn't know the exact numbers, but a public records request has shown that the agency had, as of March 4th, incurred administrative costs of $78.3 million sure. on a recovery mission that's distributed about $43 million. So oh, far. that's the story about how much females keep it for themselves, yeah. 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 They're so bloated. Wow, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. How about the Hold discussion that, oh, I'm sorry, Robin had a question. What is the town highway number for North Hattie Bell Road? What is the town highway number for North Hattie Bell Road? You got me. Okay. It would be on the map that's in the, the old meeting room at the town office. Okay. In the corner, kind of right in the same corner where the Wi-Fi code yes. is. There's a town map there. It doesn't, North Hattie Bell wasn't created until you created it, Michael. It was oh, Sand Lake. I created it? Wow. <laughs> there was no North Hattie Bell. It was so it's Sand not going to be on the Sand list Lake there. Road. Oh. There was no, no, because 31 is Hattie Bell slash Sand Hill Road. There was no North Hattie Bell. Okay, that's so right. The select board created that to kind of eliminate the confusion about what the name was. So it would be 31 then? I'd have to look at the map. I can't remember the number. If it's 31, if it's an extension? Yes, mm -hmm. it should be added into it. Okay. But Both it's not. together, then it would be that number that you use. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there had been some discussion about uh, when the, the bids have to go out and come in as far as FEMA getting, giving an, an extension. And Nate mentioned that he could have it so that the bids have to yeah, come in in December, but... I wouldn't stress Nate anymore. Yeah. I wrote to, when I sent all this information to the program delivery manager, mm -hmm. I asked what other information is being used mm -hmm. to move forward. And we have a conference call, a Zoom call, mm -hmm. Wednesday at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I'll ask that question. And oh. if she needs, if she believes she needs an RFP, even a draft copy of the mm -hmm. RFP, then I'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Absent that, I think they have enough information to move okay. forward because they're writing the mitigation plan, mm -hmm. right. not us. Right. And the reason why they are is we were told by our state uh, representative, if you want to call it, mm -hmm. in intermediary between FEMA, that it's more expedient to have FEMA write the mitigation plan mm -hmm. than to have a town to write it. So let them go forward, mm -hmm. write the mitigation plan, you know, we'll sign off on it, and mm -hmm. then go forward and do what we want. But at least we'll be able to have the project complicated. So the idea that if we don't have the RF or the bids due until like winter, you thought we might get a better um, bid because Contractors will be in their offices. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. yeah. But what FEMA will utilize are the numbers associated with that DeWolf and Associates wow. report. Okay. If we come underneath that, that's fine. Okay. You know. Good. Okay. But they have numbers, concrete numbers. Mm -hmm. It's not something we just pulled out of the air. Mm -hmm. uh, they have numbers that they can just we can justify. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all this other information. As long as they don't need to know the lab long or something else. Where the call would come from, Where did that pipe box come from? I know where. Where did that metal come from that was built for? There was a cast. That was a mine. Where he wants to put it. Okay, so next is a uh, 9 a.m. Zoom conference call with FEMA on Wednesday. So, other incidentals, uh, I responded to a request from FEMA, wondering whether or not there's going to be any hazard mitigation projects for Wilbur, or Foster Hill Road, and I wrote back, no, not at this time. We have no mitigation projects 
uh, associated with these roads on project number 741427. And Will, did you say Wilbur and Foster Hill Road? Wilbur and Foster Hill, there's mm -hmm. several other roads associated with mm -hmm. that. So that current, that the more recent landslides on from Wilbur Road don't count. Not for last year's. Oh, okay, okay. okay thank you. Okay. For me, they don't count now because the work's already completed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we've closed that case. Yeah. If we wanted to do another mitigation project, that would be if they let us get in for this year. Probably, if you wanted to do something, we could. If, was there any? Um, Repairs done to Wilbur Road. Nothing of any, nothing, nothing of any mm -hmm. size, no. In this most recent? Yeah. yeah. Did we, did Where did all that material end up, come from that ended up in their lots? Uh, from the bank. From, yeah, from the hillside. Yeah. From the hillside as it went down left yeah. Wilbur Road. So it wasn't necessarily all road material. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Okay, there are a couple of questions on North Eddyville Road, Nichols Pond Road, etc. Dates of work for Nichols Pond Road, Cape Road, North Hattyville Road. And she calls it Hattyville Road, which is pretty cool. She, she forgets that it's North Hattyville Road, so she kind of condenses them to Nattyville. Nattyville? Oh, N-A-T-T-I-E, Nattyville. They're from, they're from south of the Mason-Dixon, so it's pretty interesting. So we completed that. We sent them the dates of work for Nichols Pond Road, Cape Fork Road, North Hattyville Road. We confirmed that North Hattyville Road was contract only, and we're working on to uh, define more clearly what work the contractor performed. And I had to answer a contractor's questionnaire if a pick applicable and it was applicable so I completed that and sent it to the FEMA PDMJ. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, Save pays 250. Oh yeah, donated labor. We got mm -hmm. in July of last year there was some donated labor to uh, help clean up the town offices. So I had sent them all the timesheets you know, I had all the names of the folks and how many hours they were and at $28.14 an hour, how much we should be reimbursed for that donated labor, but she didn't like that. Mm. She said, you have to read this and then send that to me. Read what? <laughs> read this and then send that. Resist? Read, read this. Oh, read this. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So, so she sent me this, I don't know, section to read for donated labor. She didn't mm -hmm. tell me which form to fill out. She didn't read it. So. Well. <laughs> and then lastly, again, we sent the FEMA uh, point of contact, uh, reverse engineers, preliminary project designs for those two mitigation projects. Mm. Mm. And here's that lovely little snake chart. Mm. There's no handouts tonight, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, any questions? Any answers? Because <laughs> 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 I'm just about out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, then FEMA disaster at 4810, which is a new one. And I sent that email out asking this blackboard if they would like. Uh, the same team to respond to that, apparently so. Do we have to like vote on it or something? Probably a good idea. Nah. I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> Skip and Danielle to be the disaster team for the new flood. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Skip. Um, so I will attempt to uh, sign up for this new disaster. Mm. Uh, information for Wednesday's meeting. Mm -hmm. How much, uh, what kind of damages did we have for this year? In other words, uh, East Hill, we got East Hill, uh, West Woodbury, okay, yeah, Cabot Road, mm -hmm. um, County Road, 
Town Road, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and a, a whole bunch of smaller spots. Both oh, so of the bridges got dinged, right? Both mm -hmm. bridges mm -hmm. got hit again, and then mm -hmm. the, the third bridge, mm -hmm. that was oh, violated okay. more so. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a fair amount. Mm -hmm. Nothing like last year. How much, Randy? I think you sent an email saying you have about forty thousand dollars worth of damages so far. That's just for the nails. And that's not counting any of the machine time, labor, mm -hmm. trucking. Forty-four thousand one hundred one dollars and fifty-two cents is for the new expense for twenty-four floor. Yeah, those expenses keep rolling. Could you send me Peter Daly's rates of pay yeah. and uh, loaded labor rate in terms of production and stuff like that? How much it is? Yeah, and, and benefits yeah. with branches. Yeah. Because I have to send that to you. So, <clears throat> Skip wanted us to talk about the bicycle sign procurement. Yeah, I was in the uh, Montpelier Co-op doing my shopping, mm -hmm. buying my IPA, and uh, <laughs> I was approached by uh, or daring wonder, <laughs> wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he asked, he was wondering when these signs might be installed because it's been forever since, and we've been talking about these signs since the uh, town plan was, uh, was approved. So part of the town plan's priority actions was to install recommendations for traffic calming and bicycle facilities. So traffic calming for bicycles included these signs. So that was a priority action in the town plan. And outdoor recreation goal, one of the goals in terms of outdoor recreation was to expand hiking, biking, skiing, snowshoeing, off-road motor sports opportunities on public, public and private lands. So these are all embodied in our town plan. And it just astounds me why we cannot have these signs purchased and installed in like, I don't know, eight locations along County Road. I just, I just don't understand why. That's still a lingering issue. I think there's been some resistance on the part of a few people, but we did. You guys approved it. Yeah. Like several meetings ago. Yeah. Okay. So it just, what's the next step? The next step is, from what I understand, who's going to order them? The Planning Commission can't order them because they are not an authorized party mm -hmm. to make purchases without going through the select board. This person who asked me can't order them. I can't order them. You guys have to order them. You have all the recommendations, the specifications of the sign, the costs. I Just think we had an email from Michael saying the specifics, didn't we? Are you talking about Michael Sadler? What? Yeah. Yeah. No, for yeah. you. No, uh, that's, all has come from Michael Sadler. Yeah. Oh. Who, who may be the person that was at the co-op. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and I remember from a, select board, a recent select board meeting that the signposts were Already purchased. Mm -hmm. purchased. Um, and the sign, uh, we did have some discussion mm -hmm. about the sign and the text on it, and, mm -hmm. and then I think we kind of went with the sign that was originally proposed. Um, and I 
thought that somebody was going to be ordering the signs. Mm -hmm. So whomever that is. And is that normally what happens? Is a select board member would be the one who orders well, the signs? Well, it's kind of a road town highway thing. So signs that are going town highway. But so I, I'm not sure. Maybe we never decided who was going to wear the signs. And I was from that meeting. I was under the impression that the, the signs were already ordered. That we already had the signs in place. I was just after the post. My mm. task was right. to post and anchors. Mm. Yeah. That's right. I get, and I think that probably there's no reason. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you all know something I don't. But it, there's no reason that they haven't been ordered other than the ball got dropped. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree. I could reach out to Michael Sadler to. I'm, well, he's not. I'm the sure. We have an email somewhere that. I could actually just look for that email, and then mm -hmm. I could forward it to you, Alfie, if you're willing to actually yeah, place I'll, the order. Yeah, give me the green light. I'll order them. Okay. Great. I'll send it. I'll find it and I'll send it to you. All right. That's all I have. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I totally agree with them, but I'll do as I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I recuse myself from the vote on that because I didn't like the wording on the sign, but I'm not going to continue to fight it. I think that motion passed unanimously, if I remember right. Uh, no, it was just me and you. Yeah. Was it? I, I was. think you were yeah. cute yourself. I think I you were abstained from or Whatever, yeah. Right. I didn't know. There was a difference. I didn't want to do that. You're right. Yeah. But either way, it's kind of all irrelevant. Like, we did we did approve it. And we. Right. Made, and I'm sorry that it's taken so long. Like, we right. should well, make it happen. And we did mm -hmm. have a flood happen, too. That's true. Kind of <laughs> the flood did happen. Yeah, I mean, even if we did order the signs that next day, there's uh -huh. no way we could have gotten them up. Right. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say it too loud, but we're trying to catch up with the repairs. Okay. Chris. Just happened to have it. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I sort of assume I saw her. Yeah. Okay. So, the emergency watershed protection program. Mm -hmm. so Every email should be oh, just sent you to you. Oh, it? Well, yeah. Okay. So we talked about this program um, at the last meeting, mm -hmm. um, and you asked me to um, get you some sites and some names. <laughs> um, so I did put a posting on the Bush Forum. And got six responses, um, and, um, and I created a list, which I mm. have given you. There are some municipal sites that um, um, that I'm aware of that I mentioned, um, and then there were um, different Woodbury residents, uh, resident properties, um, mm. and one of these I was aware of from the a crew of folks from Herrick's Cove Road on Woodbury Lane. Mm -hmm. And they came, like, included that site. Um, and then the others are all sites that came in from the Front Porch Forum uh, posting. Uh, so there are 11 sites total. Um, and uh, so what needs to happen now and what will happen um, if the a town, uh, Woodbury Select Board, um, agrees to be a sponsor for um, this program. Um, is that, um, I will send in the list um, to the Natural Resources Conservation Services. They're, they're the ones funding this program. And at some point, they will send uh, someone from um, the NRCS to do a site inspection of the different ones mm -hmm. that we list, and that person will decide whether or not um, these sites uh, are eligible for the program. And so the program, just to um, remind everyone, is not for any repair work, and it's only for 
the flooding that happened in 2024, not last summer, but this mm -hmm. summer. Um, and the, the main points of the program are protection, prevention, and public safety. So any of it, like, let's use the um, bridge over Corkscrew Road, like Alfie's going to repair it. But uh, I have listed it as a site. There may be work that could be done on that bridge to help prevent it needing to be repaired in the future. And there's another dam, uh, or another dam, another bridge about 100 yards, maybe even 50 yards down the road. It's privately owned by a fellow named Peter Halverson, um, who's a member of the Rail Trail Committee now, um, where the bank is eroding, and his uh, bridge abutments are also, they're still solid, but they're another erosion mm -hmm. event will. Um, um, so that's the site that I've listed. Um, so this program will pay for um, the 100 percent of the design work to try to prevent um, these different um, things that are happening in these different sites, and then um, any kind of construction to implement the design work. Uh, the program will pay for 75 percent, um, and then it would be up to the private landowner to pay the other 25 percent, or with the municipal sites, um, you know, it would probably be up to the town. I have listed a couple um, municipal sites that I feel are like Ron Rathburn's, the, his property, if you ever go behind his house and his garage, you know, he's been doing Herculean work to try to save that property from Buck Lake Brook as it comes down into the village. Um, somehow, to, to me, even though it's his property, it really sort of feels like a town, something a town should be um, helping with, um, just because it um, affects the flooding in, in Woodbury Village that we're also trying to stop. Um, the other, the Woodbury Mountain Road, um, commonly known as uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail, um, Chris Byram's property, um, there's been a long history history of erosion from um, the class four road, Woodbury Mountain Road, um, onto her property. And this year in 2024, there was some serious deposits of stone, mm -hmm. erosion and gravel um, from the flooding event there. Um, so, and because it's a town road that's basically flooding onto her property, um, I kind of feel that that's a municipal site mm -hmm. also. So these are the sites that I've come up with so far. I don't think that there would be any more, but there might be a new one came in mm -hmm. today, the uh, fellow that um, bought the building that used to be our uh, village store um, under Robin's direction. Um, he mentioned flooding both from last year and this year. Um, and if you ever look at the back of the building, um, it's very right tight to Kingsbury Branch and the culvert that's there. Um, there's quite a bit of erosion there, too. Um, and that's part of the Valley Lake Road Culvert project? That it will be. That will, yeah, um, that will be addressed when the um, new culvert is put in place. Yeah, hopefully yeah. next year. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so it won't be up to anybody from the town to decide what sites or whatever. It'll mm -hmm. be totally out of our hands. Um, but, um, and if the select board is willing to have the town be a sponsor for this, uh, these projects and program, um, then we can move forward on it. If, if you aren't, then we'll just drop the ball. And uh, it won't have what is it What does it involve, being a sponsor? Um, well, do you have the handouts I gave you last meeting about what the town's responsibilities would be? are, um, so sponsors' obligations, providing land rights to implement repair work, so that would either come from the property owner or the town, uh, securing all necessary permits, um, seems like that might be part of the design work, but maybe not, mm -hmm. so it means that we would probably have to, it involves a stream, you know, get permits from the state for um, uh, mm -hmm. furnishing the local cost share, um, so that would be basically, if it's a municipal site, that would be the 25%. Um, 
if it's a private site, then that's um, that's not the sponsor's obligation. That's the landowner's obligation. Or so I was told by um, Brian Boyd at the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, the Accomplishing required works of improvement to remove the imminent threat of life to life and property. So. If we're going to commit to the projects and the design work, then um, it sounds like we're committing to also the, the implementation of that. And then providing any um, necessary operation and maintenance going into the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are the sponsors of the mm -hmm. Do you need us to vote on that to make a motion and vote? It would be good to have, yeah. I think should the dam down in South Woodbury be on your list? That was last year. This is only for 2024. Oh, okay. But it's also for places that were not um, harmed, right? There was, this is not for... This is for places that were damaged with this year's flooding. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought it said it was... We won't pay, pay for the repair work, so oh, okay. like, you know, like if, if that dam yeah, had gone you. out, this year, it wouldn't pay for the repair work, but, um, and I don't know what the designer would come up for prevention in the future. But, um, okay. Yeah. okay. Um, I'll make a motion to be the, what's the term? Not the sponsor. sponsor. The, is sponsor. it sponsor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have until September 8th to submit <laughs> the list to um, the NRCS. So that would be before the next select board meeting. So we'd be responsible for the cost share? I mean, that's For the municipal sites, yes. And there are, oh. you know, there are basically, I mean, you can say that Woodbury Mountain Road is not a municipal site, if you want, or you can say that buying Ron Rathburns is not a municipal mm -hmm. site, and it is private property that's being damaged. Mm -hmm. But it, um, you know, obviously Ron's property is being damaged by Buck Lake Brook, and the town doesn't have uh, municipal property. Um, the Chris Byron's is being damaged by runoff from um, the Woodbury Mountain Road. So, um, so Michael, are they gonna they're gonna choose, right? You said it's out of our they hands. They will they will pick a site. There are a couple here. In fact, there's three or four that are kind of questionable from my knowledge of the program. So if we cross those ones off the list, are those out of the running for them to choose from? Um, well, we could let them cross them off the list, and if they aren't, I mean, like the two beaver mitigation things like Carol Ray um, and Woodbury, the Woodbury, the Greenwood Lake Association. Uh -huh. um, you know, like Carol Ray's Beaver Dam did go out this year and it did flood the village. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, to me that's a, a valid site and whether, whatever the um, National, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, whether they deemed it a possibility or not, I have no idea, um, but it is a public safety issue, as is the other beaver dam um, that's on the Pelts property, um, which didn't hasn't breached um, either last year or this year. But I know that uh, with all of the heavy rain, that the uh, people at Greenwood Lake are, you know, having uh, property damage just from the high level of water, which is affected by the dam on the downstream side of Bainbridge Road. There was a group of us that met to put in a baffle there last year. The Fish and Wildlife Beaver person came, um, and I think the Greenwood Lake Association didn't want to spend the $5,000 that it would cost to put a beaver baffle in. So, hmm. so, so that water would come down through the village? It would come right into the village. If, if so how is that dam up by Kipp's old house? Is that strong enough to hold? That's a whole other issue. That's an old uh, historical dam, um, and there are several other dams in Woodbury that, um, you know, they have held the last two floods. Yeah. Um, I do know of one uh, that's on Packa Hagen's property that I do beaver um, work on that was, uh, it didn't go with either flood, but last year's flood did kind of 
make it look a little funnier than it does already. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been keeping a very close eye on that so that um, nothing will happen. Um, so who suggested this Greenwood Lake Association was? Skip Marcassani is the one that But these other names on here, Alex Peltz, Effen. I just mentioned that because I wanted you to know that there was a meeting about that, yeah. the dam on the property that happened last summer, mm -hmm. um, actually before the flood. And that was the Peltz as well. Alex was there, Tyler Brown from Fish and Wildlife was mm -hmm. there, I was there, and there were about four or five um, people from the Greenwood Lake Association mm -hmm. there, in including Skip Marcassani, mm -hmm. and I, I can't remember the other names. Michael, can I ask an obvious question? Sure. Is that the, they will go, they would design a, a, a protection program with, or mm -hmm. for these residents. Yes. And dependent, that could be like, that could range in cost. It right? could range in and cost. And the owners would have, as well as Woodbury, would have the option to say, that was really nice of you, but that is not something we're going to spend our money on, mm -hmm. even though it's only a 25%. Yes, I believe that there would be. Um, that's a good question. You know, I'm not 100% sure that if we commit to the design work, does that mean that we've committed to the uh, um, implementation work also. Because I could find the answer to that. Right, because either you could design a $100,000 exactly. program mm -hmm. for somebody on, and they'd have to come up with twenty five grand, which might not be in their budget. Right. And so it would be the same thing for the town. It would be good to know, I guess, before we Or they might say. think that, it's a, that it should be paid for by the town, but it really is a private property thing. It seems like a great idea, I know that really, as long as mm -hmm. um, I could um, email there's no Ryan Boyd um, that question, um, and we'll probably get a response tomorrow or the next mm -hmm. day. Um, so there is a motion on the table um, right. to approve this, and I would. Could uh, we approve it pending? Yeah, I would. That would be my if you made an amendment. Yeah, but your, the application okay. has to be in by. September 8th. So I'll amend my motion. So I'm going to make a slightly different motion okay. um, to be the sponsor mm -hmm. for this program pending um, Michael finding out whether or not we actually have to commit to going forward with the projects. And if that is mandatory, then we would not. Is the sponsor. I'm just trying to see if, uh, if there's anything in the literature that... Mostly because you'd be buying, you could be buying something that you didn't necessarily mm -hmm. know how much. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah, there's the a cost of your project. I can't see anything in here that... Obligates the town. Obligates the town. Mm -hmm. um, if... If the des uh, design work was done um, to to actually do the implementation or town or the property owners, so so I will ask Brian that question. I'll send him an email first thing in the morning, and you know if you wanted to make a decision um, pending that answer, and then the answer was you know like um, that if the design work is does. Does the town or the property owner, are they obligated to do the construction work if they have had the design work um, done? Because um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is the program will pay for 100% of the design work, but uh, people should know whether or not if, if they can afford the, mm -hmm. the, the design work. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was pretty clear from Liz's motion that if the answer is no, you don't, you're not obligated to okay. it. That then yes, mm -hmm. please apply. Okay. But actually, can I ask a clarifying question before we vote on my motion? So they're gonna, if we go ahead and um, become the sponsors, they're gonna choose from the projects only on this list. Is that correct? Or yes. okay. Yeah, they won't look so for any other project. if we had projects that we felt were more deserving than others. Could we steer mm -hmm. them towards those by crossing off the ones that we thought were less deserving? I don't think so. I think it's up to NRCS to decide which ones they are. Okay. So, like, do they already have this list then? No, or? they don't. Not yet. 
Okay. So I guess what I'm wondering is like it, when we submit the list, do we would it make sense to look at it and see which ones we thought were more important and then not submit the ones that weren't? No, okay. That's really a decision that, that we aren't really um, required or to make. I mean, th this mm -hmm. is totally, the decisions for these sites are totally in the hands of NRCS, not, not the town. Uh -huh. I don't know if, um, you know, they might consider um, parts of the town, kind of like, you know, if, if they're going to build a tower or whatever and mm -hmm. the town has deference on what could be done. I think I might understand and clarify, and maybe you knew as well, Michael, but I think what Liz is saying, I don't think we could do that for any of the residential properties because I think that they've requested to be on there. Okay. So we wouldn't want to eliminate their, like, right. sorry, Carol, no, not happening kind of thing. But, but maybe the municipal But things. the municipal ones, if there was one, Michael, that you thought, oh, that it would be really great if that uh, Buck Lake Brook site was chosen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would, we, would it be of value to pull these other projects off of that um, so that we were sure that that Buck Lake project, for instance, you, and maybe right. that. Well, with the site visit, I know that um, Brian Boyd from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is planning on attending. I'm planning on being there, a select board member can plan on being there. We could have our road commissioner be there and we could put in the good word, yeah. um, that kind of mm. thing. Um, but I don't think it would jeopardize if, if the person felt that the other sites were totally valid too. I, I think a preference for one is not going to eliminate another. I mean, I'm speak, I shouldn't really speak for the NRCS, but I wouldn't think that it would um, um, jeopardize any of the others. Okay. So, like, I'm just wondering, you know, it seems like one of these might have a higher value to the town than some of the others. I, mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. So it, you don't think it would be beneficial to the town to cross off the ones that are no, less No, I think, uh, okay. you know, I think we should, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter how many sites we have on uh -huh. the list. Um, it's, that's not going to make a difference in the decisions that mm -hmm. we make. Okay. They, okay. they could approve all four? They could approve all four, yeah. Okay. They could approve, approve all 11, maybe. Mm. What if they, do you think it's likely that they might approve one that we thought was less beneficial and then not approve? Well, I don't, again, I don't think it's up to us to, to pro, you know, okay. to um, prioritize. The, um, it'll be up to that. I mean, part of this might be and that we would prioritize on which one we would actually complete first mm -hmm. based on how much money we have to cover the 25 percent. I mean, we could do that once the sites are approved and the design work is done. Um, and again, that brings up another question, how, how long after the design work is done do we have to do the implementation? Mm -hmm. That's another big question. But then, right. Is there money for implementation also? There are, there would probably be other monies available. Yes, I'm pretty sure there would be. So this 75 percent, 25 percent is only for like private projects. There, it's no, 25 percent, but there are, there is a special category. Uh, where did I see that? Um, uh, where they would pay? Yeah, okay. So NRCS may bear up to 75. 75% of the eligible construction costs of emergency measures. However, there's a 90% within limited resource areas as identified by the U.S. Census data. And I would be willing to bet that Woodbury might be in the limited resource mm -hmm. as a small mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it does say typically cost share is 75% USDA, 25% sponsor. So what do you think, Diana? You think we're ready to vote on this? One? Yeah, I think there's not a lot of danger there. Mm -hmm. Once they're going, they come out and look at all those projects, and they'll have some criteria. They're probably not all going to be eligible. Yeah, that's, I, I, yeah, I have no probably idea. Not all criteria. good ideas. I mean, I don't know what you could possibly do with that building on the corner here. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, so let's build them a new foundation. Right. Yeah, just 
for your no questions. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, I think having that um, part of the uh, motion that if if um, if the program, you know, if the design work is done and then the landowner or the town um, is not willing to come up with the twenty five percent for the. Um, you know, are, are they committed if, with the design work to also uh, um, go forward with the um, construction work? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question, and mm -hmm. I definitely want an answer to that um, myself. And I don't, you know, I've been kind of quickly trying to find anything in here about that, but it, there's nothing mentioned. I'm sort of surprised that they would commit to the to paying for the design exactly yeah. you know, without some sort of commitment to pay yeah. for the actual work or if there's a you know something where you end up having to if you decide not to do it that they don't that the cost of the design work is mm -hmm. is we're obligated for that. for that I can yeah. see that or maybe mm -hmm. they just choose the choose the projects and then the design work doesn't get done until it's agreed upon Mm. That could be mm. true also, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess without a design, you wouldn't really have a sense of cost necessarily, you right? Wouldn't. Mm. I, think, I think the form that the, the decision we're trying to make tonight is: Are these projects eligible? Mm -hmm. And Mike's going to send that list in. They're going to decide: Are they eligible? And then the design starts. Uh huh. And the decision of: mm. Can the homeowner take care of this? Fair, mm -hmm. fair, fair. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're really deciding the whole. Right, just whether to go ahead and right. let them start the process. Put this list in front of them and let them decide mm -hmm. which ones are eligible. And and you know if we find out um, that uh, I mean we could if if a person came and did all this and, and said okay I'll be, approve different the different sites, um, we should definitely have an answer to this question by then. Um, mm -hmm. And if if it is that um, if you um, Go for the design work that you are committed to. The construction work, um, you know, we can after the sites are validated or not validated, we can say no. There's no obligation until money has passed to the town, I think, or the uh, land. Um, actually, it will be to the town um, for all of this. The, mm -hmm. um, So, but I'll find out the answer to that question. I don't see anything in the literature that, that answers that question at all. So these people who put their names in here, they are aware that if it goes ahead, they'd have to pay something. Yes, um, I have um, have it in my on my list to meet with everyone who has um, contacted me at private wow. landowners. I, I still have I, the Gerhard Glazer. Um, I haven't met with him. I haven't contacted Ron about this, and I haven't contacted Chris Byron. Um, and then I still haven't made it. I can't find any contact information for that group of people that came to the select board meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to drive down to the end of the road, and hopefully there'll be, still be somebody mm -hmm. at one of those camps. Are you talking about the Harris Cove people? Yeah. I'm friends on Facebook with one of them. Do you oh. want me to try to get a hold of her? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if you wanted to give her my contact information and, and tell her why. Yeah. But they, but they, they don't put their even, name in here or you put their name I in here? I put their name in here oh. because that, and I, that seems like the perfect project that would assist um, a number of property owners. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, it's really not the town's responsibility mm -hmm. to do anything with those trenches that have formed from the flooding. That's, uh, Town property that's flooding onto mm -hmm. their property. Uh, it wasn't the road this year, and, and they received actually worse damage, I think, on their property this year than they did last. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's like the perfect mm -hmm. project for this mm -hmm. thing. Um, so yeah, I just put it on. You know, I mean, when I first read about this, that that was the first thing I thought of. But I haven't contacted any. I mean, I tried to, but I, I couldn't find any information. Can't find. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than going and knocking on the doors. If some of my town residents give me their names, then I will okay. work my magic. Okay, I'll give you a copy of this. Um, 
And uh, yeah, for the uh, Harris Cove Road folks, um, there's a, a number of names. Um, and Gerard Glazer did send me an email. It just came in today, so mm -hmm. I haven't responded to his email yet, um, but I will try to meet with him. And um, I'm very much aware of what's happening up at Gwen Marsha's property um, from the color, um, putting some beaver stuff up there. Um, and I haven't contacted Paula McLaughlin um, on Woodbury Lake yet. Um, but she contacted you? She contacted me, and, and I, I had driven by there a number of times. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she works yeah, during so, the day. Yeah. But um, before September 8th, I'm going to meet with all these folks, and uh, I've sent them this little flyer thing that came out, and mm -hmm. have made, made it known to them that it's not the town that makes the decision, it will be that there will be a site visit mm -hmm. from the NRCS, and also I've let them know about the 25% um, that they would be um, obligated mm -hmm. to help pay. Um, so. so do you have what you need? I guess so. Yeah. We I need a vote on the motion. No, we didn't vote. Yeah, that would be good. We started to vote. I made a motion. Okay, you made a motion. The, the motion was to, to agree be to be the sponsor pending Michael finding out whether or not um, it would actually obligate us to go ahead with the construction work. And if the answer is that we have to, then we don't necessarily agree to be the sponsor. Mm -hmm. But if the answer is that we don't have to go ahead with the construction work, then we will definitely be the sponsor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, so when I get an answer, I will pass that on to you okay. folks. And if it, if it is a no, or if it is that if we go ahead with the design work, then we are committed to the construction work, then um, I'll just say it would have been nice if that was stated in the uh, yeah, right. flyer. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, but if, if, if um, we have to be committed before we even know what it's going to cost, sorry. No, thanks, but no thanks. Right. Uh, Michael. Okay, so this one is mm -hmm. a little bit easier and less complicated. <laughs> oh, wait, I have another one for you. Oh, okay. I got this thing about the MERP. Yeah, I can, I, I can explain what's happened with that. We did get awarded money for that. Mm -hmm. um, Back up and tell me what MERP is. Okay, uh, a Municipal Energy Resilience Program. Yep. So, um, from the grant agreement, um, and we were kind of focused on the town hall and possibly the town office for that. Um, what wasn't clear to me from the grant agreement, and it's not in the text anywhere, is that uh, we had to require or request an assessment of the two buildings to be done mm -hmm. in order to qualify further. Um, and so, um, it, in the grant agreement, it doesn't mention mm -hmm. requesting an assessment. It just mentions that eligible for funds would be, um, you know, an assess uh, like we did with uh, um, Efficiency Vermont, mm -hmm. just have a. So that didn't happen. Um, so the pro plan that we had for the town hall and maybe the town office, we're no longer eligible for. We still have the funds, and we could still use them. Um, one thing that Sam Lash from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission mentioned, and, and Diana, you were looking into this at one point, is we could do the window dressing project. And we could have the, um, the parts, the windows mm -hmm. that are made in that uh, training project be for the town hall. Um, so it's kind of a you know, a booby prize, uh, sort of. Um, we could just send the money back, too. I mean, I was mm. kind of upset that um, somehow that wasn't clear in mm. the grant agreement that we had to yeah. request an assessment. Yeah. There, were three, there were three phases to the program. They were giving out these $4,000 grants to help towns 
like energize an energy committee or something like that and come up with ideas of how to help people and save energy and all that. And then, and then if you want to go to the next phase, there is funding for uh, energy audits of public buildings and these are very serious audits done by a bunch of uh, engineering firms that they have contracted with, mm -hmm. buildings and general services. And after that, uh, the uh, it became competitive as far as um, uh, grants to actually do the implementation of measures mm -hmm. was competitive and they made it clear that they were going to fund the things that had the most potential for saving energy and I don't think any of ours do. Our yeah. little buildings don't use a lot of energy to begin with so this whole program was pretty much designed for larger yeah. municipalities. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we could have some different talks and pay, you know, some. I mean, it's all kind of foo foo stuff. Yeah. Um, so. We haven't been able to get an energy coordinator for how many, many years? Right. Many years. <laughs> Maybe you were the last one. Well, yeah, I was, uh, I was listed in the town um, report, but. Um, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, and but it does also say that the money must be fully obligated by December 31, 2024. Mm -hmm. so. so, so we could do the window aggressor thing. Um, you know, we could make storm windows for the town office and the town hall from that um, and get some benefit. Um, or I could just say, you know, sorry. maybe we could buy some actually buy some insulated shades for the town office because I don't see. Those. Um, I could ask if that. I don't a, see those those uh, hand those homemade windows from the uh, program there as being right for those windows mm -hmm. because those windows need to have shades. I can ask that. If but you anyways, know. you know, I mean, it would be good uh, for the town hall, which doesn't have shades anymore, but. Again, that one of the things about those windows is you have to be able to take them down and store them right. in the summer, and that's yeah. a problem. Right. At least in the town hall, not so well, much in the, the town little, office. The boiler room there, there is some stuff stored there, but I don't know if they would even. They, I don't know if they would fit in there. No, so well, Robin's like, gotten it pretty much cleaned out, but it's still pretty full. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, the tabulator base takes up a quarter of it. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> stored in there. Okay. And then we've got the voting booths and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, we could just say, um, sorry, we really don't feel that we want to spend this money on anything and you can have it back. <laughs> I don't, did we, we didn't get it. We already sent it back it, once. We? <laughs> didn't we already send it back once? No. No. We, no. It, we told them once that, that we, we didn't want interested. it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And then I kind of. And then they kept like bugging us. You really don't want it? Well. <laughs> but I thought we could get, you know, an energy Something. letter from the town, mm. for the town hall. I mean, the one that we had done before was, was well, pretty enough. half mm -hmm. ass. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the building has some, some um, deficiencies <laughs> as far as what could be done. But anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. the. the Energy audit that we had done could have been a, a lot better. And mm -hmm. It would have been a, definitely much more um, informative and something to work yeah. from. Yeah. Um, but um, it wasn't, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so there. So, what would the select board um, like to do with that um, money that we were awarded? If we can't find anything to spend it on by December 31st, we okay. So you don't think the back. window dresser thing would be? I really don't. I really okay. don't see it. Well, you know, and I'm not sure when those when those workshops actually happen. If we could go into get involved with the one in Craftsbury because the Harvard one really kind of fell apart. Well, what Sam was oh. suggesting is that we actually host one. Oh, and, and yeah, I think. That's a, if we were to have that on the list, it would be obligated. It might not be spent, but it would be obligated. Do you think that's what they meant? I, what is obligated? Fully mean? obligated. Hmm. So obligated means that you're going to get the money. 
Okay, so if you're all the good, the fun stuff. So, I'm part of that workshop that's building these things in Craftsburg. Oh. In this fall. So, really? Yeah. So we had a group, two guys come out, came out to the house and measured what we needed yeah. for the summer. Oh. So I volunteered to help make those and also any others that they need, you know, crafted. So you could perhaps... Great. So did you go to the measurement <laughs> training thing? I did not do the training. Yeah. But I'm not sure what that yeah, is. Yeah, laser measurements. Yeah. And measured high, high depth and width. Yeah. Yeah. And so based on that, the frames are made in Maine. Maine, yeah. And then they're assembled in Crestford. Mm -hmm. So be part of that assembly team. Uh -huh. But you should be able to get some help just to measure, to have those. You should be able to, uh, we could probably get somebody, well, if you have the measurement training, you could. I don't. Oh, okay. I can check in with the person at the Central Marginal Planning Commission to get a better sense of... They're going to send us to some kind of outfit that, I mean, a group in Barry Montpelier area. I'd really rather stick with the Craftsbury people because, because the they're, they're really far advanced and they've been doing this for years. I think Sam so just be prepared with the suggesting <laughs> um, the person from the um, CDRPC was suggesting that Woodbury host one. Yeah, that's and, then that's the, and then the windows that get made in this sort of training would be for the town hall. Mm -hmm. to to the town mm -hmm. hall. Mm -hmm. But we can't um, we can't make the windows during for training. I mean, we, we have to have the measurements, and then you have to send them off to Maine, and they put it all together, and then put the and then they send the, the piece. Right. And so the forms come in sticks. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. you and put those sticks together and then put the plastic wrap it, the plastic around it. And that's it. Tell you what, let me get a little bit more clarity on this particular project that was yeah, suggested yeah. and, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to make them. Okay, yeah, I'd, of course. I'd be happy to make them. It's, I've heard that it's fun. I've heard that that's far part of the project that that is fun for people because you get to go in the community thing and mm -hmm. put stuff together. Michael? Oh. <laughs> Just real quickly, a very specific mm -hmm. question. This $4,000, could it be used towards the purchase of new windows to replace the windows no. in the town office? No. Okay, I no. figured it couldn't. Oh. It's unfortunate. Uh, so let me get a little bit clearer on this whole window yeah. dresser thing, <laughs> and I'll report back at the next slide. Like, yeah, um, it's crazy that you could spend it on plastics, but not on windows. So, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, ask that. <laughs> so jumping back into the emergency watershed protection program, mm. third par paragraph, it says, NRCS may bear up to 75% of the critical construction costs for emergency measures, 90% within limited resource areas. Mm -hmm. The remaining costs must come from local sources and can be in the form of cash or in-kind services. Mm. So in-kind services to me opens up Pandora's box. What is in-kind <laughs> services? Mm -hmm. Well, let's say like um, mm -hmm. like the twenty-five percent for uh, the mountain road um, to fix the erosion problem, or to the design work. If the town road crew did that work, that would be in-kind. In yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd still be paying for it. Yeah, we would be paying for it. Yeah. Um, but that would be our, we are, you know, we're paying for it through material and labor mm -hmm. as opposed to just, um, you know, forking over the money to a contractor or something like that. Right, but, but if it was a residential project, it's going to... If it's a resident, the town would be involved in any of that. We're going to have the road crew fix somebody's... Right. Complete design with the scope of damage. NRCS may require a sponsor to contract a sign in the construction of her site. There's a lot of stuff in there. So, next, somebody wants to be on the conservation committee? Yes. Um, Tell you Zahn and mm -hmm. Libby Case. And who? Libby Case. Okay. Um, Natalia's been coming to a number of meetings um, and um, 
would like to be appointed to a conservation commission and in the case would also like to be appointed. We uh, discussed this at the last conservation commission meeting a couple weeks ago or might have been last week um, and we're all in favor of their being appointed. That's a fun job. Mm -hmm. It is a fun job. Someday when I retire, I'd like to be appointed okay. to the Conservation right. Commission. Do you just need our approval? Do you need us to vote on well, it? Well, the site yeah. where he's appointed to the yeah. committee or committee. We have five now? You only have five? We have five. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice to actually have some female um, participation. It's all old guys with the exception of Kylie Briggs at this point. <laughs> So Mike, um, so Chris, Michael would, has got two um, candidates who want to be appointed to the Conservation Commission, Libby Case and Natalia Zahn. I make a motion that we approve. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. That was easy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do the town hall roof, and um, we did approve the bills. So the only thing left on the agenda is this paper, paperwork from V-Trade that I don't know whether we really all have to listen to this. It's, uh, did you get to it's we what it is is a, a revision so. to the rights of way that we gave them last year to let them use our property for the, okay. for the big culvert project, and they want to give us thirty-five hundred dollars for all our. Efforts, I guess. And uh, it's better than a sharp sticking yard. It's better than a sharp sticking yard. I guess. I think it was the cement in the on Route 14. Let's do uh, paper parking. Yeah. There's a. They've given me a, a detailed map here uh, with different numbers. Lot number seven is the one where the. Culvert went all the way through, and they maintained the right of way to to fix it. I mean, not the culvert, but the stream. Uh, lot eight had was the, the old the other park, which I guess they had a couple signs there. And then lot five was the road, Valley Lake Road. They had a couple signs installed there. And the town of Woodbury lot four was the uh, place where they had installed some signage on our, you know, for the for the signal signals that they had installed. Basically, that's that. So, if anybody wants to see anything more, the paper the bicycle signs. Huh? <laughs> I was thinking that we should replace that one tree, though, in the island. Yes, um, and I spoke, the Planning Commission talked about that, um, and Michael Sadler, who is a landscape architect, mm -hmm. suggested um, a tree that would probably survive there, Yeah. Right? Um, which is a linden tree. A what? A linden tree. Okay. I don't know if you've ever been, if you're in Montpelier and you're in front of City Hall, there's mm -hmm. some very nice living trees mm -hmm. growing right there. Mm -hmm. um, so the other mountain ash tree that is still alive is just barely alive. So oh, so should we do both? I would do, I would suggest that you do both. Mm -hmm. um, the other trees, the yew trees, are seem to be surviving. Mm -hmm. The little, the little Everything. Oh, the little shrubs things, yeah. yeah. They mm -hmm. get buried under snow all winter. Yeah, and they're, still <laughs> they're, not spread, they're not growing very much, but they're there. Yeah. Uh, if Peter and I did the work to plant those, I would be happy to help be the, the planting of the, the new ones. Um, mm -hmm. Might want to wait till spring at this point. But. Yeah. Well, if they give us the $3,500, we can just put it away and <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> Can we get our money back because they gave us a smaller size culvert? <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> that Sorry, you want. And Liz just told me the only reason we're going to skip the RFP. Because I haven't read, done my part. Of Got it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, nope, that's fine. But we use you as an excuse. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I sent it early this morning. So. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, God, there's another one? Oh, geez. Yeah. You got to read the more recent version. Okay. I don't Thanks, know guys. The dates are realistic. Uh, and they, they seem probably really won't. Soon, but did you, anybody want to look at these in more detail? Or um, so I just, here, here are the names. Is this, there's original and, and a copy of each of these four. And they have to be signed and notarized. So if you just. And this is, they're giving us money for the use that they've already exactly. used. We're not authorizing right. anything new. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I thought when I, I said, I saw yeah. it was like that. Oh my God, they're going to do some more for us. Yeah. Okay. It's just because last year, when we gave them the right to use that property, things were probably totally different. And now yeah. we know exactly okay. how it is. So, um, so, um, so there's some detail so. in relation to this this RFP. I will go back and change the dates again and resend it. Okay. Because um, I think it was a pretty ambitious timeline, anyways. If we approved oh. it tonight, oh. so uh, I will change it so that it's mm -hmm. kind of more reflective of mm -hmm. our next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so for all the work on that. Do you want to authorize me to sign these? Because I have to has to be notarized and all that stuff. So. Yeah. So do we not all have to sign it? No. Yeah. Okay. I move that the board authorize Goodbye. Diana to sign Bye. the um, grant of temporary rights. The grant of temporary rights from the Vermont Agency for of Transportation. The board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? We aren't seconding these. You're things. right. <laughs> they have to, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Diana. How about... It has and, to be notarized, so I'll have to go down to the office and do that. Do we have any... Um, took away my agenda here. Um, we just had bills and payroll orders, or we had other business. Um, Tom Oliver not doing. Yeah. We already signed the orders. So, so we can... Uh, we can adjourn so that Jerome can start packing up. Yeah, Jerome looks like he wants to go home. <laughs> Motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye.